فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأهو إلى الكاف ينشر لكم إلى الكاف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهف آيات آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يذلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلقف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إن وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة ويقولون 
خمسة سادس كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثمائة سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا له وغيب السماوات والأرض أبصر به وأسمع ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولا تجد من دونه مرتحدا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفرنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره قرطا وقل الحق من ربكم فما شاء الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إن 
تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من صود استبرق متكئين سندس واستبرق متكئين فيها على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما دي اللي بلابد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله it gives me great pleasure and honor indeed to present you our speaker for today مولانا جنيد كارساني all the way from Durban ما شاء الله أهلا وسهلا بك يا فضيلة الأستاذ and Maulana will address us on the beautiful topic, the status of women in Islam. فَلِيَتَفَضَّلْ مَشْكُورًا يَا فَضِيلَةَ الْأُسْتَاذِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على المستفاع جماعة المسلمين those listening from near, from far. And Alhamdulillah, with the barakah of this month of Muharram, this Yawm al I greet you with the Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> when the entire world, at the time of the Nabi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that period of time, did not have the proper status for the members of their society. Wherein you had 
international bodies at that time, be it the Christian church, whoever it may be, discussing that whether a key important component of their community woman had a soul or not, Surah An-Nisa was being revealed upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they were discussing, should they be part of society, should, should they be treated as possessions or chattel, or should they be treated as given any rights whatsoever, property ownership, etc. Surah Maryam was being revealed upon Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they were discussing everything that is contrary to honor and dignity, the surahs of union, marriage, divorce, property, ownership, all of that was being revealed upon our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show the distinguished nature of Islam. That Islam gives everybody their haq and their right within a perimeter, within a system, and does not deprive anybody. So when we see, from a national point of view or a global point of view, months like the month of August here in South Africa, National Women's Month, and by all means it is for a reason, but we as Muslims also understand that whilst this may be their discussion currently, this may be the progress of their society currently, Islam already owns the narrative of the rights of men, the rights of women, the rights of children, the rights of everybody to a point that Islam preserves the dignity and the honor of everybody. So yes, whilst we alhamdulillah will acknowledge that from a national point of view, the discussion is being held regarding the status of the rights of women in the country, National Women's Month. We know that Muslims have not been second to the contribution of the struggle of this country at all. It gives us an honor to honor and to present and to acknowledge the sacrifice of our own mothers and our own sisters. We honor in this month and always, we don't require a month, but we always honor the sacrifices of sisters or mothers like, let's say for example, Sister Hawa Timol, the mother of the martyr Ahmad Timol, Rahmatullah presented with the body of her son, being thrown by the apartheid government at that time from the top of the building, and presented with the body of her son, she is one of our heroes who we should never fail and never stop mentioning the sacrifices thereof. And her day came, 1996, TRC, when she's testified what they did to her child at that point in time. And whilst it's hard for any mother to relive, whether it happened last year, last week, or 20 years ago, we honor her, alhamdulillah, and all the unsung sisters and brothers and children and families that stood up for the haq and the truth whenever it needed to be stood up for and acknowledge them that they truly are our heroes when it comes to sabr, when it comes to ajar, when it comes to all the great qualities that our dean speaks about. We honor our mother, Halima Sadan, Rahmatullah Alay, the wife of our honorable Imam, Rahmatullah Alay, Imam Abdullah Harun, right here. Not just a national Cape Town hero, but a world hero. Makki Madani, a student of Deen, somebody who stood up for the, for the haq and for the truth, disappeared at a young age. And his family, and his wife, our mother, our grandmother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the full reward for the sacrifices that they made at that point in time. So we are not secondary in owning the narrative of the rights of women in Islam. This is something that we need to understand, something that we need to acknowledge. However, the West in particular, and especially the current brand of the West, the, the generation that we are living in, their attempt is to commercialize even something that is assumed to be right and assumed to be correct. We need not fall in that narrative. We have our own narratives as Muslims. Already at that time where discussions were being held, what is the status of society, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Darab Allahu mathalan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cites the example of the woman who believe or an example for the woman who believe. The wife of Fir'aun. The adopted mother of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. The one responsible, Sayyidina Asi alayhi salam, who sees that box with the infant, the baby Musa, floating on the river. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that, O oh Musa, that although you may have been in a precarious, dangerous situation, we put the love and the mahabba of whoever saw you floating. And when she now sees that infant, that child, even though her husband was the tyrant of the time, was the, you know, was the butcher of the time, the zalim and the oppressor of the time, but yet he could do nothing in the face of his wife that we will take this child as ours. We will take this child as our son. And, and she raises him. And not only does she raise him, she stands as a protection for him. But when the time comes to accept the deen of Musa wasalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cites her as an example for the entire ummah that do not forget her and acknowledge her and honor her. To the extent, Maryam alayhi salatu was salam, when the rest of the world was debating and talking about the status of what a woman is and what she is not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Maryam alayhi salatu was salam's incident. Where is there a greater description and an analysis of what a woman experiences when Allah ta'ala makes her a conduit of life when she gives birth than the incident of Maryam alayhi salatu was salam? Can there be any lover of of Isa of Maryam alayhi salatu was salam, a true lover of Maryam and Isa alayhi salatu was salam, who hears what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Maryam alayhi salatu was salam with that does not acknowledge that the narrative and the discussion of the Quran is the true one regarding Mary, regarding Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That, oh Maryam, that now that you have taken Makan and Sharqiya, that you have gone to the eastern side, which may geographically be the area of Bethlehem, etc., which is on the eastern side of Al Quds of Jerusalem. Now that you have gone to that side, do not grieve, La Tahzani, do not grieve. Do not be overcome by the stress and the grief of you now bringing a child and then your people coming and telling you that where is the father of this child don't grieve i'm with you at this point in time shake the date palm that shake that tree that date palm to that ripe dates will fall upon you dig under you you'll find that stream cool water cool your eyes comfort yourself and know very well that you are bringing the gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you and to the world isa alayhi salatu was salam is not simply the gift to those who claim christianity isa alayhi salatu was salam the nabi the prophet of allah is a universal treasure a universal gift and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him and he is the bastion of tawheed who will return to lead this ummah later on isa alayhi salatu was salam and what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe or how does allah ta'ala describe the conversation of isa alayhi salatu was salam when confronted by his own people as an infant wa barran i am good to my mother in that, in the Quran, I'm good to my mother. He could have said many things, but Allah Ta'ala chose this so that it will be read till the day of Qiyamah, till the end, by every Hafiz in Salah, by every person making the tilawa of the Quran -e Kareem, by every person who acknowledges the Quran, that your Isa said that I am good to my mother right till the end of time. This is our narrative. This is the real narrative of Deen. And there are many, alhamdulillah, who are on the front line, where men cannot be on the front line. For those who visited Al-Quds, Masjid Al-Aqsa, 
who are the frontline defenders you see in ramadan you see out of ramadan the very same murabitat elderly ladies sometimes who are there sitting on a chair who are the frontline defense for the 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 haram of islam the frontline defense for the awwal and the first qibla of, of, of the muslims not just on their behalf but on behalf of the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is our narrative the status the honor the position of the nisa of the woman in deen this indeed is our narrative that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now you know created for us as a proverbial eternal example right till the end of time but you see there are those out there those that wish and desire to commercialize gender that a male must be a commodity so we can sell him in a certain way a female must become a commodity so she can be sold in a certain way there must be a breakdown of the family unit so that everybody becomes a chattel slave that even though it may not be written on your birth certificate that you are an abd a ghulam a slave in reality you will be because you have now been commercialized their intent is to now spoil roles even not even reverse roles but spoil roles that no this is not her role or his role for that matter they shouldn't be a gender islam celebrates the roles of a man and celebrates the roles of a woman what does allah tell us speak about a man in society and a woman in society their roles are complementary how could you ever get a better description of something that is complementary wherein allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and which we often hear in the khutbah of nikah when they you know the, the marriage sermon the marriage khutbah takes place that hunna that they are a libas a garment for you and you are a garment for them the body and the thawb the body and the and a garment are they conflictual does one fight with the other do you open the cupboard and your clothes all of a sudden fight with you some people may argue if the body dimensions have changed over the years my genes and my 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 gut may fight fight with me but generally today when you chose your thobe and you are or your attire and you now coming to work or you came to the masjid the masjid what was it fighting with you no i'm not interested in in fitting you in any way i'm i'm independent and as a result you know you can walk cal and go wherever you want to and hold me by the side it doesn't work in that way because both of them are complementary and allah ta'ala uses the description of complementary in the quran kareem that they are garment for you and you are garment for them to show the ummah that we are all about genuine harmony because when genuine harmony in society prevails that society may not become very wealthy but they will have a wealth which no money can buy peace of mind they will have a wealth no money can buy they will have an identity they will be able to know that this is the hierarchy the rank in society they will have peace of mind and comfort which no money can buy and no upside down topsy turvy society could ever claim as their own this alhamdulillah is our narrative our narrative as muslims now i'm sure that during the course of the month you'll hear many khutbat many deliveries and many sermons regarding the topic of the day for it is a national discussion ultimately at the end of the day and we don't shy away from national discussions that we participate in it we contribute towards it we understand that whatever national or international discussion that is out there islam has got a stance and we will boldly claim it even if it doesn't happen in our lifetime but we will contribute the correct and the desired stance and narrative towards the discussion that is out there with regard to the issue of woman and gender in relation you know in general one cannot but acknowledge the fact that every person needs to look in the inept depth self in their own personal self that am i the best example and role player of whether it's a man or a woman in the society that i live in and one cannot shy away from the fact that we have an epidemic and a sickness and an illness in not just our society but it is a global issue of gender based violence it happens 
And why shy away from it? Quite often, sometimes we belong to a culture that, you know what, if something's happening there in this part of the house or that part of the community, don't talk about it, it'll automatically go away. The nature of our deen is proactive. The nature of our deen is that if an issue has been identified, then you raise and you present the very best solutions. The very best solution starts with your Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with your Prophet as an example, wherein he tells the men of his community that you know what? Khiyarukum, the best of you is the person who is best for his woman. And he uses the plural gender. He doesn't use his wife. He does not use his mother. He uses the general to show that you are the best to the Nisa and the woman in your community. Wa ana khayrun and I am the best to my family, to the women who are around me. To a point, and as was our discussion in the office, which I didn't intend to include in today's bayan, but alhamdulillah, good that it came up. And once Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, years after the passing of Khadija radiallahu anha, this was in Medina tul Manawara, when Hala bint Khuwailid radiallahu anha, the sister of Khadija radiallahu anha, comes to visit him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is reclining, the Prophet of Allah is reclining. Not completely asleep and not completely awake at the same, he's reclining, he's resting for the afternoon. And Hala bint Khuwailid radiallahu anha knocks on the door for tasta'adhin, she seeks permission to enter. And her voice, her mannerism, the way she presented herself, similar to Khadija radiallahu anha, for after all, they were blood, they were sisters. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sits up and he says, Khadija, Khadija. Now what is this? This is the real genuine man that continues to value relationships even if the person is no longer there, even if the wife is no longer there. And the result of that or the, or the product of that relationship is because the, the, the foundation of that relationship was genuine, was solid to begin with. That this is my libas, that this is my covering, this is my, my partner in life. And then Aisha radiallahu anha, his wife, who's alive of course, ka'allam takun, as if there wasn't in the entire world a woman but Khadija radiallahu anha. How can you still remember her? I am here inside your house here right now. Rasulullah s.a.w. presents to her that you know what Aisha, you may be current, you may be here right now, but I had my children with Khadija. She stood by me when nobody else stood by me. When everybody else says, you know, Yakfur, he is disbelieving. Yes, Ba'u, he's a Sabian, he's this. She stood by me under those circumstances. How could I ever forget it? One of the first, or I think the first hadith of Imam Bukhari's kitab, Al Jami' al Sahih. What, what does he say? What does he include inside there? That hadith, by the way, is Babu Kaifa Badil Wahi. How the, cha how the revelation was revealed upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Now what does he stay, say inside there? Amongst that, in that first hadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes down in that anxious state from the cave, right? This is a part of our seerah, right? That we probably would have heard over and over again. That he comes down in that anxious state from the cave. He does not know the impact of the wahi of the revelation that has come upon him. Who comforts him? Khadija radiallahu anha. And when Khadija radiallahu anha comforts him, there's an interesting conversation that takes place. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, says that I fear destruction upon myself. You know, sometimes you are so anxious. Sometimes you are so flustered by an event that has taken place. You are genuinely concerned that I must not drop because of a heart attack. Or my pressure must not go to a point. These are of course current terminologies that we use. You fear destruction upon yourself. When Rasulullah وسلم, expressed that you know what, I'm so anxious right now, who comes? Comforts him, Khadija radiallahu anha, who stands by him. And you know what she says? Something that I will come to at the end of our discussion over here, which is very important right now. She says that do not fear destruction upon yourself, for you are good to the ill, you are good to the wayfarer, you are good to the traveler, you are good to all these people, and Allah does not destroy such type of people. 
and doesn't only apply to him it applies to us you ask any person who is the pillar and the support of the community Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not destroy them physically and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves them mentally as well. Why? Because of the qualities that they have of perseverance and looking after other people. But you see, to create this justice in society, to ensure that every woman is safe, every man is safe, every, every child is safe, so that we can become the exemplars of this ummah is a collective strategy, not an individual strategy. That if something is wrong, Rasulullah says, you help your brother, zalim or madloom, whether he's an oppressor or whether he's being oppressed. So a sahabi says that we can understand that he is oppressed, he's madroom, we know how to help him. But what if he's an oppressor? How must we help him then? What did Rasulullah say? Ya kuffu yadahu, hold his hand so he does not commit oppression. He may not realize the impact right now. He may respond with aggression right now because his mind is not of the right equilibrium. But later on, he'll come and thank you. That brother, you held my hand back. You stopped me from saying whatever I was saying. You knocked on the door at the right time so that I do not embarrass myself and my family. You did the act of Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil murkar commanding towards good and prohibiting from evil at that point in time. May Allah Ta'ala reward you that day will come and that appreciation will come. This is called the collective strategy of the ummah which has held us in good stead for a long long time and which was, which was, which was never be and must never be under estimated you know there's a particular khalif different narrations with regards to you know his background and who he was but the anecdotal story is more important than you know the, uh, the you know the, the person the personality involved he had territory upon territory and he noticed that you know this one group of soldiers they were performing terribly losing even though I've pumped in resources over there, even though the best generals are with these people over here, they are losing. What's wrong with that particular team? But then there's another team on another end of the border somewhere. They are all seemingly on paper mediocre. Mediocre generals, mediocre soldiers, mediocre equipment, uh, you know, 50-50 type of support they are getting from the central government, but they are performing. And they are performing far better than the team of stars are ever performing. How is this possible? So his wise wazir, his wise uh, advisor, tells him, listen here, Sultan, I will tell you the reason why. I'll explain to you the reason why Team A is performing so poorly, even though they're sitting with stars. And Team B is performing so well, even though they're sitting with nobodies from a technical point of view. Call both groups of generals to Baghdad, and both of them come. The wazir says, now listen to me. For the next three days, you're going to be listening to me, Sultan, and I'm going to explain to you the strategy of both of them. He says, okay, the first group, the team of stars, lock these guys up in a room. Give them ample wudu, water, etc. They must read their salah, salli, whatever inside the room. Keep them there for the full 24 hours. No food. You're going to starve inside there. Keep them inside. Team B, mediocre performers. Put them also inside a room. Enough water for your necessities, but you're locked up with no food. 24 hours inside there. After 24 hours, give both groups a pot of food. But such type of food, that's a soft type of food, right? That you require, you know, a sp like rice, like pop, something like that. You can't really, you know, bite a chunk into it. You need a spoon. You need something like that to, to do justice to it. But before you do that, tie everybody's hand up with these long spoons. You know that khrut liepel, the big spoon that we put inside the deg when we're making the, 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 the kichri or something like that, when we're hitting it from the bottom? Tie everybody's hands up with a spoon like that so he can't bend his elbow. Long spoon from end to end with the actual spoon part by his palm and ending right here by his shoulder. Tie every right hand, left hand. Tie everybody up. So here you've got team of stars and you've got team of underperformers both in different rooms nice pot of food everybody's starving 24 hours no food but your hands are tied up here like this give them one day we'll open the door once again they open the door with the team of all your star performers 
And there was food everywhere on the floor. Food on the guy's head, on his shoulder, on his soap, on his clothes, everywhere. Everybody is miserable inside the room. Nobody has eaten. Everybody's in a bad mood. Go to team B, the team of supposedly underperformers but are performing well. Everybody's happy. Everybody seems to be well fed. Nobody's starving. Nobody's complaining. What happened between these two strategies? You see team A, the team of stars. When the pot came, they were putting their hand inside and feeding themselves. How are you going to feed yourself with your hands tied up like this over here, dropping it from one and a half meters and expecting to catch it in your mouth? How are you going to feed yourself? But team B, the team of supposedly non-performers, you know what they were doing? Putting his hand inside the pot, feed my brother. Feed my friend. Feed my companion first. And when he's saturated, he'll feed me. And when this is done, we'll feed the third guy. And we'll carry on like that in cooperation, in tandem, until we will get the job done and we will see today out in an amicable and in the best possible way. This is the cooperation that is required of the ummah. Which, is, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates an opportunity ever so once in a while. A macro opportunity like this, violence in a community. But then there are also small, small you know, opportunities that arise. For example, we've got a strike in Cape Town, haven't we? Think about that elderly person that needs to get to hospital on Monday morning. You, Allah Ta'ala, gave you a facility. But be cooperative and understand it's not only about you. It is a time Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala requires the entire ummah to cooperate. Yes, somebody else can make amends. They've got a child, they've got a grandson who'll pick them up. But what about the Monday morning appointment of a person who's got nobody in this world? Be cooperative. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us all full ajr and reward. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen. Takbir. Allah Akbar walillahi alhamd. Shukran kathir. Jazakallah khair. Fadilat al-Sheikh Maulana Junaid Karsani, all the way from Durban, reminding us, alhamdulillah, of the great status of women uh, in Islam, alhamdulillah. Uh, may you have an absolutely lovely time here in Cape Town while you're here, Maulana. And we hope to have you back at Masjid Al-Quds very soon. May Allah keep you good. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Just a few announcements. The city red bus tours in conjunction with Masjid Al-Quds will be having a community Cape Town tour on the open bus on the 27th of August. And that will be from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. Seats are limited, so please, those who are interested, kindly contact any of the committee members for a seat on the bus, inshallah. And uh, also from this Friday and every Friday, we will be having for our pre juma collection as the collectors come through, not only receive cash, but we'll have the tap and go card, because sometimes people don't have cash and they feel bad that they can't put something in the towel so now they can just put their card and tap for their donations for the masjid inshallah ta'ala then also we are assisting the masjid um, fundraiser in langa masjid al quds as well as my tuesday morning housewife forum we have already started donating towards the project that the masjid in langa can prosper inshallah and for the community there so there will be more information with regard to the langa masjid and whoever is interested please come forward and put your shoulder to the wheel and donate to this worthy course inshallah ta'ala then we have been asked to make dua for uncle abdul uh, Hassan from Sterling Crescent in the Islands. His janaza was yesterday, as well as Auntie Sughara Sunday, who also passed away. May Allah grant them and all our deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. Then we have been asked to make dua shifa for Sheikh Shakir Hamildin from Johannesburg. He's also the cousin of Sheikh Faik Hamildin. He is seriously in hospital at the moment in Johannesburg, and the family always watch our. Juma alive, and they ask us to please make dua for Uncle Shakir Hamildin that Allah grant him shifa, and also for Mr. Ajmudin Obari from Shanti Crescent, who used to be one of our very regular fathers as Musalliya in the masjid. 
He is quite ill. We make to Ashifa for all our sick people at home and in hospital, inshallah. Then, of course, I would like to request the Jama to keep in your du'as my wife, Nulfa. She will be going for a kidney uh, transplant operation, donating a kidney to her niece, uh, Mumtaz Ali. And we ask that you make du'a that Allah make the operation a great success and grant all of them speed, both of them speedy shifa. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. And then last but not least, this morning I was a little late to rush here to Juma because for the whole morning I was attending at UWC the National Dialogue on Coalition Governments, where all the political parties in South Africa came together this morning. And Alhamdulillah, the honor that they invited me to do the opening dua and to say a few words. And with the government there, the president, the vice president, all the mayors, etc., I told them in no uncertain terms that they need to come to their senses. If they, as the leadership of this country, cannot see that our country is burning at this moment, if they are so deaf that they cannot hear the cries and the screams of our mothers and our children who are suffering because of total injustices in this beautiful country of ours, which has already gone to the dogs. I say this by time that you come to your senses as the leadership of this country, because leadership is a position and, a, and, and it is a sense of responsibility that you have accepted and you will be answerable by God Almighty. And I say there's only one way forward. If all of you parties realize that this is not a joke, it's not a joke. It's time for you people to, to unite and to take into consideration the plight of our country of South Africa. Unite because it's only through unity that we can once again build this beautiful country as a country of milk and honey. And I said it's time that they come together and they walk. They don't use flowery languages and only claim to have the best constitution in the world, but put your Put your words into action. And I said to them, the main thing is engage the religious leadership of all the religions and ask for scriptural guidance because all holy scriptures have good guidance. I know many people have an issue with interfaith, but my feeling is that we need to unite, cooperate, and network with everyone because it's not only a Muslim thing, this is a South African issue. It will touch the lives of each and every one of us. So we know the happening of yesterday, how many people had to walk basically from Salt River to Mitchell's Plain because of taxi violence. Please, please, Jamaat, in this hour of Juma, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore peace in our land. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring that necessary peace and comfort that we all need. Because if things are going to get worse, it's definitely going to affect my and your children and our grandchildren. So let us do something positive and bring positive change. Amen. And we ask Allah in this blessed hour of Juma to please accept our cries, our appeals, and our du'as. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alamin. Shukran. Jazakallah khair. And baya, baya tarmakasi. What's that? Oh, can you kindly just come forward, please? Can everyone just kindly stand up, step forward, that the moment the imam come from the mimba, we can start the salah immediately. So wherever you see a space in front of you, that space is rightfully yours. Come forward. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 
Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اجعل الاسلام والمسلمين وعلى الشرك والمشركين رب اختمنا بخير رب رحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi ta'il ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajimi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Fanahmadu hamdan kullama yahmadu alhamidun. Wa a'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajimi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Ta'amuruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna lil munkar. Wa qala al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. من رأى منكم منكرا فليخير بيده فإن لم يستذف بلساني وإن لم يستذف فبقلبي وذلك أضعف الإيمان أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من هومان لا يشبعان من هوم في العلم لا يشبه منه ومن هوم في الدنيا لا يشبع منها أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام هذا وحثكم على طاعة الله وطاعة رسوله ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد خسر وغوى واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ويا نجاة التائبين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوانم ودفدل وبارك وزلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونوبه وتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر رضي الله تعالى وأشهدهم في أمر الله عمر رضي الله تعالى وأستقم حياء عن عثمان رضي الله تعالى وأقضاهم علي رضي 
الله تعالى عنه وفاتمة سيد سيد أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفر العباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطرة لا تغادر ذنبه وأن كل سهاب سهاب أجمعين الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعد فمن أحبه فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغض فببغض أبغضهم وخير أمة قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى من الفعل والقول والعمل والنية والهدى إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وتم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا الله الصلاة حيل الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو واعتدلو please make your sufuf as straight as possible do not leave any gaps the unity of the ummah is in the straightening of the sufuf Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن بطش ربك لشديد إنه هو يبدئ ويعيد وهو الغفور الودود ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد هل أتاك حديث الجنود فرعون وثمود بل الذين كفروا في تكذيب والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اغفر وانت خير الراحمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة المتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار اللهم وفقنا لما تحب يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين يا ارحم الراحمين وجعلنا من التوابين يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك النصر في الدنيا وفي الآخرة يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم عزنا وعز الأمة يا ارحم الراحمين أينما يكون وأينما يكونون يا رحم رب العالمين اللهم حرر مسجد الأقصى من من غصب اليهود يا ارحم الراحمين يا الله you free the ummah from tyranny ya Allah free our country from corruption ya Allah free our free our beautiful land ya Allah from all issues and concerns ya Allah ya Allah grant us just leadership ya Allah make us worthy of leadership ya Allah make us custodians of those who you have placed us in trust ya Allah ya Allah grant us the both of good of both worlds ya Allah grant us rizqan halalan tayyiban ya Allah keep us away from haram ba'isa ya rahman rahimin keep us away from all evil ya Allah ya Allah strengthen bonds of relationship ya Allah strengthen the bonds between husband and wife ya Allah father and son daughter and mother ya Allah strengthen the family bonds ya Allah Allahumma jannibna min al-fitan ma zahra minha wa ma batan protect us from the fitnas that are out there ya Allah ya Allah whether it is LGBTQ whether it is whatever fitna of today tomorrow ya Allah save the ummah ya Allah grant us righteous leadership ya Allah Make us all, Ya Allah, Imams in our own homes, Ya Allah. Those that are madhloom, Ya Allah, lift the hand of zulm from them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help our brothers in Kashmir, in Palestine. Help the Rohingya Muslims in Burma, Ya Allah, wherever they may be. Return every lost Syrian back to their home, Ya Allah. Grant them lust, just, just leadership wherever they may be. Remove the designs of the kufr from the bilad al-Muslimin, Ya Allah. The plans and the makar of the kufr, Ya Allah, from the bilad al-Muslimin, Ya Allah. Grant us izza and honor in this world, Ya Allah. Grant us, Ya Allah, unity, Ya Allah. Grant us, Ya Allah, the togetherness in the Jannah, in the Akhirah. Ala al-Ara'iki yandurun. So that we will be sitting on couches talking towards one another, Ya Allah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka khayra fi dunya wal akhirah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Wal wafa, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Wal amana wa sidq. Min kulli shay, min al-lisan wa min al-qalb, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين
The Prophet ﷺ said, none of you will have faith until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. I wish for a meal for iftar. I wish for a drink to end my fast. I wish for a joyous Eid. For some, wishes are simple needs that we can fulfill. This Ramadan, join AMA in fulfilling the wishes of families in need across the world. No one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Anur Education Center, we give children a loving home, a boys and girls hostel. We provide them with clothing, food and education. Be the child's parent by sponsoring a student for 18,000 rands or 1,500 rand per month. Anur Education Center, a place where children call home.